Hi Gina, good morning. Bear with me, I'm gonna I'm um, gonna experiment. I'm gonna try to do quick responses and put them instead of writing as a commentary somehow. Hi. <laughs> I just woke up. Anyways. Wow, quite you're um, here you're answering um, here you're answering um, to the post I made about about the nature of or the reason rather commonly referred to as the nature of war and that's what I'm going to explain uh, but actually what I explain is uh, why wars occur and um, okay so <coughs> your response to it is wow quite a lot of words and thoughts to absorb I agree Wait, what happened to my face I'll make sure that I don't go off camera okay uh, quite a lot of words to absorb I agree I agree that war is not natural to man. Um, yeah, that's I, that's pretty much what. Though I said that, it's not an easy thing to explain. Um, war is unnatural in the same definition capacity that you would say um, a mother. Uh, Planning on how to um, hide food from their children or not care that when they come home from school um, there is nothing about food available in the house for them and she locks up all the closets and go to work. Uh, lo locks up all the cupboards so that they don't eat and go to work and goes to work. You know, there's there are things that human that people do, and you would say, "There's I know a crazy mom that actually does that," but um, you know, it's a, a, almost like aberrant behavior that is uh, counter the nature of mankind. Um, in this case, to nurture their children. So yeah, it's unnatural. I'm looking for a better word, I suppose, is what I'm trying to do. Is um. I but I don't have time for that right now. People often com conflate conflate the hunting the hunting insect, which is a really good analogy. I just read this right before I did this, obviously, um, because uh, the insect seems to scheme um, and hide and and um, set traps and this sort of thing, right? F uh, to um, which is very interesting. I never thought of that insect to the with the need for wars except they're insects okay anyways um, our fall in off our fall in grace is our arrogance which births the need of for war okay this is where I, I want to make the first uh, um, what should I call it uh, act, uh, clarification on, uh, on on the difference in the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, and I'll start by saying that recently I've been I've been getting a lot into something that I call um, revisionist Jesus, I, I had the word and now I don't remember it. Um, revisionist analysis, I guess. Uh, I had a better word, like revisionist point making, which basically what it does is uh, it detracts or it ex 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 it um, exhibits a a premise on a a uh, an assumption of a logic that may be getting made. In other words, it points out, 
it's a, also like reaching in. It's like reaching in with your hand inside a an argument, a, a paragraph that somebody says, and looking at all the rationale and saying, yeah, well, that would be possible if you thought that uh, war was this or that. And then everything else, there are assumptions that uh, that are in, in embedded inside the the rationale. It's, it, we do it all the time. You can take any paragraph, and when people start explaining, you know, for example, uh, s certain social problems, uh, how people are about money, about weapons, or attitude towards police, or attitude towards politicians, or what have you, all the time, we're having. Um, or issues, you know, abortion, rights of minorities. All the time we are uh, bringing with it, bringing with what we say, premises that would be established, that are established in our minds, in order to have that make sense. And so when, when you read what somebody says and the logic behind what some, they write, you um, what we tend to do is is kind of counter argue that according to um, another also superficial logic as they all are superficial logics let's say um, on what we're reading but you can also read with a little bit of uh, of, of um, of, of, of deeper uh, an, an, um, analysis of what they're saying and realize that when you do that you actually start seeing the reason many people say that sort of thing um, and in this case you say um, Our fall in our, our fall from grace is our arrogance, which birthed the need for power. Oh no, it wasn't. Oh. Thus, wars and their industries are just tools. So that that sentence um, precludes that um, war is something that happens. And in fact, when when you say when you say, for example, that insects, uh, where where does war have its origins? Some have said that it comes from animals. It's in human nature. It all precludes that uh, war is something that human beings do, and somehow it must be f its understanding must be found. So, and, and everybody pretty much is saying that when they're trying to understand why war occurs or why... Um, now, what if, what if you changed the circumstances, the, the description of civilization, and you see that war is not, would not be possible? Let's say... Let's imagine hypothetically that um, there was no metal, no metal at all being found, uh, you know, produced by uh, geologically by the planet, or any stone that would um, not, you know, break up if you work it too hard. Nothing really, really like slate or. Or, or granite, you know, that everything was like tough and um, tough the, the material. And, um, you know, let's just imagine hypothetically a planet like that. Um, would we have war? Because tools, p tools to penetrate flesh would not have been possible uh, unless we try to work branches, you know, and but you know what would that have produced a world where there were some really awesome wooden tools but we would not have bullets definitely not have bullets not have guns would war as we know it because 
what is war is not just uh, fighting, you know. In fact, we can prove this because we use the word war metaphorically to say, I'm at war with my neighbor. It's almost like a joke. It's not really war. The actual war is the uh, sort of the out of control chain reaction of organized um, advance and subjugation upon another also organized. It's like a new, it's like a level a, a thing, you know, it's, it's not um, something that, uh, you could say, for example, the, the food industry, restaurants or food, uh, fast food chains or mass production of canned foods is a direct result of a need that we have to eat and our nature, you know, to have things comfortable and and worry about the future, be able to stack things, organize things, elaborate them. You could easily draw that. But war is not like that. It's not in the same category as the food industry. It's something else. It's not just um, two groups of people uh, fighting at a bar either because um, these are all chain reactions of social dynamics and then people join in because they see other people uh, and so at that very moment, they, they react to defend their friends, what have you, or they see an injustice and they're motivated to jump in on one of the two sides. Um, war is not that. War, isn't th war is not that. War is uh, calculated and organized. You say, we're going to have a war and nothing, you know, the next day people continue to work and uh, they send their soldiers to start getting trained and it's all coldly calculated through the mach a machinery and organization and apparatus that prepares everybody for something that is uh, purely thought out as, as, a, as a group activity, as, as, a, as an, a, an organized activity of, of people that dedicate themselves to its um, production to its uh, okay so in this sense war is different so if you, if you had a world where weapons are impossible to produce it would not arise in human nature to organize war because wars became able to be organized thanks to the availability of uh, of weaponry and um, you know even if you go back to um, times when we uh, would just organize ourselves as, as tribes let's say on islands and that we, we can easily picture how two tribes on Easter Island would always go to war with stone sticks and stones basically um, and they would hold a grudge and you know and all this so we can see that even in absence of uh, metal they would um, have wars but you know what did they war with well they produced stones they honed um, special you know weapons they made of stone and wood I believe um, and they were there were craftsmen that that were good at this, and then they they stocked up on weaponry and, and on, on on their weapons, prepared, and so the whole ritual seems you would say then it seems to be closer to our primitive nature or uh, rooted in, in in something more organic, uh, more to do with our nature. But again, what we see is that it was necessary to create weapons in order to be able to organize the war because they had to stock the weapons, they had to craft them, they had to make chants and train with drills. And so what we see that in reality is war is what happened. What we see would be a, uh, a better description of war is what happens to mankind through its capacity to make weapons. Because we can make weapons, we can create war, which is not a brawl at a bar. 
it is an organized activity. So this definition actually uh, is uh, makes big diff changes how we understand war in in many analyses and times that we talk about it and we write about it. And what happens later on, this premise gets buried even deeper and people us, um, talk about how they're gonna, they wanna investigate why war happens based on an assumption that war arises in human nature. Um, anyways, um, you see what my point is. So um, when I started noticing this as an element of analysis in itself, the the sort of the uh, revisionist detraction of uh, of premises uh, of um, not premises of um, as assumed definitions that get layered over because they don't they're not just quickly done in our they they probably been coming along for a long time layered over layered and things were built and then from that they something else was built um, and it's really interesting because with uh, information we build the world and so if, if a lot of things it is, it's happening for example with uh, easily uh, and something that's much easier to see uh, almost right there almost happened it almost happened in the last uh, 50 years or but actually it's very ancient um, the assumption that um, homosexuality is uh, something that happens to some men and not others some women and not others but it's always been a man thing uh, you know it classically it's always been a man thing and now we have recently uh, try to uh, make it m formalize it more as a woman thing and there's a reason for that but anyways um, so this is incredibly defining to s to because everything that you later uh, want to talk about and discuss on rights and uh, you know and, and for example now we're we're uh, arguing as uh, civil rights well because they come uh, of, of uh, being able to be quote unquote gay or not gay well you know to say that you can be or not be gay comes from the assumption that some people will just be gay and the truth is that homosexuality sort of inflates or happens it's like an appendix it's like a, a sleeping organ it's a capacity or a possibility something that not necessarily will be known or will be experienced or will uh, develop and grow in the human mind and um, and it does uh, in some people but not because they were predestined um, without an end because if you really think about it you see that we kind of lose interest in in wanting to really uh, nail it you know and find out why it happens we get lazy because some things are just too hard for people too emotionally uh, taxing to admit to recognize uh, sometimes things go against the current of, of the whole area of things that we thought were a certain way and so we end up giving up and we say well it's just much easier to say you know some people are gay and then we continue on uh, with this trying to understand life um, caravan of subjects and, and uh, transmitted education um, but if you change actually if you go you reach your hand in the past and you say well no um, it seems that very obvious that homosexuality does start manifesting in a, a person that suffered this kind of childhood for example you clearly see that you clearly see how uh, there's the child for whatever reason it doesn't affect every child the same way and we still don't understand exactly why the difference is 
but we can affirm that clearly the fact that he was treated or he had this kind of relationship with other men, with his father, with other, his brothers, or the kind of relationship he had with his mom and his sister, reflect that he would later be more interested in, uh, in homosexuality. And, you know, when you live homosexually, um, one of the things you notice, and this, of course, has to do with your, uh, what you personally believe in your own perspective, ability that that gives you to, um, to understand things or see things or rationalize them a certain way and others will say believe something else and they cannot see that or they don't you know some people will say you don't want to see it but in any case uh, one of the things that becomes uh, very obvious is that when you consume the behavior the action the having sex with a, another man treats you a certain way you know you feel like something is being um, uh, quashed, soothed, um, you're released, relieved. You're relieved from a kind of uh, um, an absence of, of, of being recognized, of being loved, an absence of, um, of, of, of not caring enough. Or, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard to put your finger on it. But it's almost like a drug. It's almost like something that uh, fits really well, but not because you were predestined for it, but because it it sort of takes care of something that you were suffering psychologically. And of course, not every man will admit that. Uh, not because they're bad people or they're stubborn, but because society has counter has educated us in a completely different way about that. So, so people, men are growing up believing that, you know, uh, seeing it completely different. Um, mm -hmm. So it's incredibly important to uh, understand where we're uh, make constructing logic based on an assumption. And understanding these assumptions uh, is fascinating because in the ca going back to the case of, of uh, homosexuality, it really finds its roots in uh, men um, uh, challenging in other, each other. And uh, that part of, of it, you can you can see it in the suburbs and guys that are you know had to grow up on the street um, and have bad dysfunctional families you know that you, you see a lot more of our sort of quote unquote primitive behavior and you see how guys they challenge each other and if they don't if the uh, the, the one challenged backs down or doesn't rise to the occasion does not uh, care to respond what you see is that the, the guys will go he's a sissy you know he's uh ah you know and then what does he do he goes back to his friends and tells everybody ah he's he's what he's not manly enough you know we, we don't make complex sentences in society and culture we just find ways of delivering quickly our sentiments and we end up saying things like he's gay or he's a sissy or he's a queer or he's a fag and so as society produces new generations and these environments continue to re-utter the same terminology, we start growing up thinking that some people are gay. We don't see it for homosexuality occurring to human sexuality, as all human beings having the same sexuality, and some of us um, develop uh, more interest for or, or come out maybe uh, you know and there is actually arguments that for example nature versus nurture and beyond aside from the psychological conditioning of, which is to me the strongest force how you're shaped how you're educated by society by these kinds of teachings of society and also by uh, how you're affected psychologically and treated in your family as you're growing up. 
But there's also the discourse of apparently something na that nature does naturally. There's, uh, it ten for example, there's findings where the the youngest man, the youngest male in the in the litter of uh, the human litter, will more likely tend to, you know, and and even how we say it, will tend to what tend to want to uh, be attracted to expressing or find or being a, uh, looking for the homosexuality uh, you know to you know what I mean it's 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 uh, every single time we'd have to specify that and that becomes uh, difficult but in any case this also verifies it's almost like we keep falling with we have like a little rock under our shoe or or something and keep sort of making that mistake and there's just it's just a weak link that we always fall prey to, reaffirming and proliferating, propagating uh, that assumption, that almost grammatical, that uh, se semantical um, teaching of the, s the significance of, of that, in this case, homosexuality. Uh, because even though we have all these sciences that say there's all these aspects of nurturing, it's not, nature is basically to say that God or, you know, just randomly nature decided you're going to what? You're going to seek the same sex when you come out of the womb? So the ones that argue for nature are actually saying, um, Although it's clearly and boldly and loudly obvious that all the way to the to the the strangeness of male feel, ma of, uh, male female relations, all the way to the physicality of how the the male organ has to reach inside an acid environment and withdraw, you know, that there's it's clearly intended to separate two genders. As a, as a solution, as a, a formula of, of, of procreation. And our forms, one is inside, one is outside. Um, you know, one carries a baby, the other one does not at all, uh, does anything to nurture that baby other than, you know, on externally, socially. Um, still, we, we believe that nature may be for some reason, throws a, a fastball, you know, and says, ah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> gotcha, you can, <laughs> although it seems obvious that you're supposed to be two genders, some of you are destined to go look and be fully, optimally realized and satisfied with your same sex. You know, this is what we're actually uh, implying by saying that it's nur nature instead of nurture. So the division it, of the argument of nature nurture itself is an expression of um, this unanswered pr uh, uh, problem we keep propagating uh, in society that where we, we, we can't seem to keep it as an unseparated matter in human sexuality and we start saying this guy is or isn't gay or is a fag or is not a fag or is, you know and, and and the mother even says you know you don't be a girl you know and so there's all these different social ways that we continue to uh and teach the population that there's a separation uh men that go with the same and men that don't you know with the implication of even insulting somebody that is not man enough for example um that nature would have uh, an option of this sort. So, in any case, uh, the 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 it's the established notion, therefore, is that uh, this is a case that some people are, are for some reason born one or the other, and we have just taken it in. And if you listen, you find this affirmation. Some people know. Some people who talk about uh, the psychological aspects of. Uh, of um, homosexuality, for example, or how you, they, the people that talk about how it comes to be developed, uh, don't, because they're already feeling they have a, a different philosophy about it. 
inherently and even they themselves don't catch themselves the language will trick us so easily and before you know it you're saying is or isn't um, so that's a very difficult one but it's an easy one to understand war is the same thing we go on um, saying that war is something that seems to arise in human and no and, and you know the point is not to say oh well does that mean that we're going to have to put all our efforts into blocking mankind from making weapons uh no that's not what it's indicating what it's indicating what this is indicating is that we need to talk about it for what it is and how it really happens not assume that it is something that in reality um, was incorrect. War happens because there are weapons that permit our intelligence, which organizes things a thousand, ten thousand times more elaborately and intelligently than animals, take those inventions and create something completely new, a phenomena that animals um, they may have group behavior where bands separate and stay at odds with, with each other, but they don't coldly... Moreover, the point is not just that once you get to the, the level of mankind, and the point is not only saying that, um, you know, that man organizes wars uh, at that level of, of uh, organized intention and... Uh, and preparation, elaboration, but be, the point is also to say, well, that because we can see it, we can also, uh, in other words, the, we can also um, not make ourselves war. We can also decide to not war. So the point is not just see ourselves as a species that is prey to forces and decide whether it is uh, natural or not, or or how we are expressing our naturalness, how much of our naturalness we're expressing, but it's also to realize uh, we have become a species that can decide. We have become a species that, aside from all the elaboration, how much naturalness there is in the homosexuality expressed by mankind, we also have the intelligence that looks at it, that can see it, and can analyze other parts of it. Uh, for example, the the complementary, the the dynamics, um, the, the the part of that has to do with complementing with the opposite gender and how we are and how it, um, you know how the good that it does to the species for the genders to. Uh, be together and therefore uh, we can also decide upon these things in other words to be able to be so far up and seeing how we are as a species and looking at the universe also gives us um, looking how we are as a species at the universe what did I say looking at the universe and understanding how life works in, in the cosmos gives us a perspective that it, uh, we're, it's not just about deciding whether um, w you know what homosexuality is and is it true or natural or you know a misconstruction of, of beliefs but also to decide we can actually see that we have the language and the rationale the analysis to say well since we can understand it since we can talk about it so amply so elaboratedly so richly we can also propose to ourselves whether uh, we can um, learn and teach why of its occurrence and try to make a society where it doesn't occur so much this is also the gift of our uh, super intelligence compared to animals to the animal kingdom um, we can also we're not subject to accepting or not accepting it uh, we are at a place that we can also decide upon something that though it may be proven that ex um, derivations of it exist in nature 
the other way around. We are derivations of nature that express something that is very primordial. Um, we can also say, but, you know, we're also conscious to see that men always kind of feel lousy somewhere inside themselves about it, and it never really fits, and it never, there's always people protesting, and society as a whole doesn't accept it. Now, it all makes sense uh, scientifically, actually, that um, it never s we have to force society to accept it. We have to try so hard, and we, we make such efforts. This is the great irony of the, of the recent homosexual movement, that we make such efforts to try to get um, society to accept it and, and fight against countries to change their ways of, you know, enormous, enormous amount of energy being used uh, to educate, educate and, and proliferate ideals and da 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 to accept and incorporate homosexuality uh, uh, into society. Why should it be so um, unthinkable to say, well, can't we do the same thing about understanding why it occurs and making society so that every man and every woman grows up fulfilled in their anatomical sexuality uh, with, with the opposite gender? Why are we so reluctant to only force homosexuality and not say, wait, wait you know why? Because we have made it about something that aims at the individual. We blame the individual. You can't force somebody to love. You can't force somebody to get hard and have sex with the opposite gender. It's easier to teach society that individuals need to be uh, honored in their homosexuality, and it's easier to punish individuals uh, to, if they don't accept homosexu homosexuality. Um, and we're not talking about abuse here, we're only talking about thinking, uh, or we're not talking about violence or anything like that. Uh, but because we have targeted the, uh, it as, an, as something that you're accountable for individually, we have made it impossible to perhaps say, well, well, we don't have that well. Because what we don't hold as um, as a society, as a knowledge, as social scientific knowledge even, not even scientific knowledge, I'm going to really go out on a limb, uh, for those that believe I'm going out on a limb, and say that even scientifically, it has never been m discussed much that um, homosexuality has its roots and everything that describes it and explains its occurrence in social di dynamics. People are not accountable, they're not the ones that do it in other words. They're not to be blamed or, or understood in their own singular uh, biology, why it occurs in them. No. Homosexuality has to do is an expression of the collective, of the species, of, of the school of humanity, <laughs> in other words. Um, so, if you see it that way, if you see it that way, and the world does not see it that way, because as soon as I walk out of this, this apartment, I will not find anybody that says to me, this is something that happens to us, meaning human beings they will immediately think who who is a who is homosexual who did it you know who's the weakling who's the who's the defective one who's the one that god punishes you know it's a different it's not it's not a world that understands homosexuality as something that occurs to human sexuality and therefore to do with something we're doing and how we're raising us and how we're affecting us and how we're nurturing us nurturing us before and after or after and before the womb to result in some people without specifying randomly for individual reasons by the thousands by the millions uh, a, an attraction or a desire or satisfaction in, in, in cultivating or discovering their homosexuality if we did know it that way as a science we would perhaps start talking about well 
that means that if what we want is for all men and women to be more fulfilled in uh, in their in their themselves, their own bodies, sexuality, and their uh, optimally uh, in accordance with their body, as everything else is optimally in accordance with our natural design, our di digestive system, our circulatory system, our our re respiratory system. You know, our sexual our sexual system um, is completely messed up. We've been messing with that. We've been separating sex from procreation and da da da. You know, but in reality, it's just a part of our body, and so we could easily propose to ourselves scientifically, um, if we realize that it's something that occurs to the species, that occurs by how what chemicals maybe moms are are or uh, or how they're treating their husbands while they're pregnant. You know, there's all sorts of great things that we've actually already gone into uh, that is being talked about. If if a mother, if I think of my own case. Um, I can think of my mother was 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 pretty a, a pretty violent person. Sadly, sadly, because the, the reasons are sad, um, and I wonder, you know, her, what what did that do hormonally? As as she kept she kept telling me the story that she had to yank me out of her vagina because I didn't want to come out. So she was going to be, you know, Diana of the of of the warring Jonas of the jungle <laughs> and just yank me out and her will was going to be so and I know how she was with her friends and her people and her uh, her husband I was gonna say um, so one could um, easily assume that she produced a whole set of <laughs> hormones that were particular to her <laughs> so um, and one is born and you know if males coming from this world that we uh, were completely ignorant about homosexuality start seeing a kid that doesn't really you know instead of you know um, encouraging him on and uh, seeing what the problem is that they don't believe in themselves they don't know how to relate to other boys because a man the woman has uh, has uh, monopolized uh, all control over the little male toddler and I mean these were things that we intuitively were already um, responding to um, you could typically tribally see um, how maybe a pre-initiation how a group of little nine-year-olds are having their first reunion with the with the fathers of the clan um, not when they go they get sent off to the jungle for initiation but when they have let's say a pre a, a, a child kind of thing and you can totally see the men around okay good you're, you know that's what they're doing what they're supposed to do and they notice the one that drifts uh, and doesn't know how to f argue back with his little buddy and so the males naturally respond and gravitate towards that one and they know what to do they don't force them they can see what's happening and they um, maybe the more sensitive of the elder men uh, reaches in and say and says take it you know take it from you know grab it something that was left between his little buddies a toy and he doesn't want to reach in and grab it you know because he's afraid of his buddies already so he reaches in and he teaches him and sort of like the like the um, like the fowl you know the chicken that sort of pushes the duckling the mother duck that pushes the 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 little duckling onto the you know the one that strays behind a very maternal but masculine way of understanding our toddlers uh, which was already with us and we just didn't know what it was and we didn't care for it we just decided to uh, prescribe idealists idealisms onto society and teach everybody uh, different notions teach things that are what we're saying and what people are reiterating it's so monumental of a of a um, a social, uh, intellectual uh, uh, subject, because when you think about the not the thousands and millions of people that have walked away with a, a a kit of understanding the subject matter for the last thirty years of their lives, um, and that's what they're looking at, referring to, remembering, recanting in order to 
argue it for whatever reason in the present day. Um, and once you look at this whole completely different understanding of it, you're uh, in a very lonely space, put it that way. <laughs> you become <laughs> very, you start reaching, is there anybody else out there? And luckily you, you see little flashes, uh, the reaction that there is right now going on. All of a sudden it's all about being on the right and Bolsonaro and uh, Trump and Le Pen and all these people are uh, the right, and so it's like we, Go, like the wacky, like the wacky racers, you know, we're all on the on the left, and we start realizing that our, you know, somebody starts noticing that our idealisms are all about mental, you know, delirium, and we start imposing and wanting to impose crazy things, and we result in in, uh, in prescribing that our children cut their genitals, or mommy, you know, the child comes to the parents and says, "Mommy, I think I'm a boy." Or I think I'm a girl, and don't, don't worry, sweetheart. You know, in a few years we'll take you to a, a surgeon to to change, to fix that. You know, and and shape you like a clay doll doll into a different gender because, you know, we're so incredible as human beings. We can just change your gender by making it look right. You know, and and uh, you know, and so when the when the people started seeing this and and the world was not letting them talk because that's what was happening you started seeing these alarms go off and if you uh i personally experienced this if i wanted to talk about it when i was walking west hollywood with my friends they would um you know you'd get attacked you're a hater you're this you're racist you're homophobe blah, 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 blah. and so you've got to shut up but all these people were noticing things that i that were uh, being established and said and believed by people and they quietly took it took it took it until somebody busts and say let's go all the way to the you know and you have videos now like this this lady uh, Lauren I forget her name she's awesome she's she's calling out on on how the South Africans uh, are being it's crazy they were going back 50 years 100 years you know back to uh, uh, tribal racism and, and they're being murdered and butchered the whites in South Africa and nobody's doing anything about it you know uh, it's it's incredible but this this resurgence of of is, is a is a direct sort of reaction to alarms that were quietly witnessed happening and the funny part is that you already are noticing how this extreme right is uh, reproducing, rehashing all the things not all the things, but many of the things that actually caused the the, the peace and the left-sided sort of uh, tolerance and da, da 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 so it's like humanity keeps pushing itself from one extreme to another because we don't let each, we don't believe in what the other one sees when they see something completely different um Instead, what we should be looking for is truth, which is right in the middle, um, and it's not a thing. Truth is what we don't know. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> truth is uh, perfection. It's it, there's a uh, um, a target, an, an area in the middle that has never been grown, cultivated, which is. Uh, that exists because of the ignorance that we cause by pushing ourselves one direction or the other or forcing people to all of a sudden go this way and that way and uh, when the that which would describe the perfect balance of understanding of running our own world of understanding our, our species uh, is there quietly ignored in the center somewhere or maybe off to the right, uh, right, uh, right a little bit or off to the left a little bit but basically it's something that we keep walking over and not seeing it okay so anyways let's finish this really quickly um, thus wars and their industries are just tools assumes that um, uh, wars is something that's going to happen and therefore it becomes a tool uh, for something that we would do anyways. Men, many people were misled concerning the concept of survival. 
Oh God, I can't believe this has been an hour already again. Um, uh, concerning the, the survival of the fittest in Darwin's evolutionary theory, yeah, the the things that would inspire uh, war to be constructed are are talked about in science. Um, he expounded. He expanded on. He expand. 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 Expanded. Expand. Expanded to say that it was that it is when communities work together to a, and adapt to environmental changes that their changes for survival are increased. Otherwise, we would probably have one lone man standing. Okay. Okay. So uh, it, what I'm trying to detract from what my friend is referring to is that in science it has been spec uh, stipulated I'm, I'm seeing the British already for some reason <laughs> <You know? laughs> justifying you know we're gonna find why war needs to exist in its all in all its naturalness um, let's see um, Darwin evolution theory he expounded to say that it that it is when communities work together to adapt. So, um, yeah, but it doesn't. This, this, at least it's how you, how my friend writes it doesn't explain what turns it into war. That there are changes of, but it does kind of generally say that um, that by having war, their chances of survival increase, um, which seems like a complicated uh, theorem produced by a society, a world that has educated itself, like I've been talking about, to believe that war must exist. And so therefore, you know, this is so typical in science. Uh, uh, we have a whole, we come into research and scientific studies with precluded um, uh, subtle assumptions that we think are inconsequential or harmless and yet they're very very essentially fundamental in establishing something uh, and so for example if people during the, these uh, Darwin days were uh, trying to answer why they weren't that's the whole point they weren't trying to answer why war occurs they were already presuming that mankind wars and so if you assume that mankind wars, you don't um, explain it in a way that says we are, we are victims or we're subject to, or rather um, we act upon the availability of things that we invent, things that we create. So in other words, if we thought along more precise lines, when we invented a gun we wouldn't continue to make more weapons because we think well you gotta defend somebody's gonna want to uh, hurt you all the you know um, and uh, and this way we can achieve this this and that and, no, we would be thinking well you know inventing this weapon will lead to more people killing each other and war uh, occurring to the species. Well, that would have been a mind that speaks from the we of collective consciousness. So it's he's, his or her rationale would have been ra rationalizing would have been completely different. Uh, would have immediately felt more accountability so to, for what it is going to cause the species to invent a gun. Because we as a species, as human beings, are a certain way. And as now that there's going to be a gun available, knowing how we are, what's going to happen is that. Two dots. Um, we've never had that world before. Uh, we are capable today already, but it's, it's enormously, uh, I don't want to say distant, because that's kind of pessimistic. Uh, enormously lacking in our will right now to uh, to uh, analyze and understand uh, the things that humanity does and 
the way it is affected by its inventions, including the way we run civilization, this administrative, administrative systems and institu institutions by which we run it, affect the species, makes us become, uh, and we see it typically in how, for example, we deal with with uh, social situations. We uh, we go and uh, incarcerate people because uh, they they do things, um, you know, uh, rob and steal or kill and uh, assaults on society on um, our civil expectations, uh, and we go and look for them or apprehend them or they stand out and we go after them <laughs> because uh, anyways uh, and we think of locking them up putting them away because and the preclusion there is that there will be a number of individuals that uh, end up doing this to their own kind and a whole bunch of preclusions that explain why we have prisons for example uh, we don't think in terms of which we actually do we have the sciences but they haven't reached the creation of our nations they haven't reached the creation and the design of our institutions um, we know these things it's like part of us are uh, a whole bunch of us over there are saying one thing and a whole bunch of us over here are leading and doing something completely different um, that the way we educate our children, we treat our children, the neighborhoods they grow up in, what they learn from the world teaches them to think, to feel. The world nurtures them a certain way and sometimes things conspire and examples set by people around them and reinforced by messages of society and what have you and they end up by the force of the collective uh, transgressing doing something that is an assault on its own kind basically um, we don't understand it that way otherwise instead of judicial systems with prisons we would have um, institutions that looked at how we're performing as a society saw what the problems were and immediately put all its efforts there instead of uh, you know, handcuffs and guns and prisons, you know, they would all our material efforts and all our intellectual efforts would be going towards uh, healing the way society uh, produces its own individuals. Uh, so we're far still from, uh, but it is actually the truth. That is not uh, a theory <laughs> like it is seen today. It's not an opinion. It's not a, a leftist uh, you know, perspective, it is the truth. We are our species. The world makes us. We are everything that are that is uh, nurtured onto us. And, and even what we have to learn to distinguish is that we come out more inclined, predisposed, not to specific things or actions, but to be susceptible to the influences and the effects of society and nurturing. We're more susceptible to the effects that uh, this would have on one person compared to how it would affect another person. In this sense, we come out different. And sometimes we come out very different. We're much more, uh, you know, in science, it's, this is not an invention. Science has this vocabulary, but we just haven't organized why, the great why. Uh, of what we are able to rationalize. Uh, you know, you have studies that say things like uh, more people are prone to be, say, and already we use the verb to be, to be a thief, to be a crook, to steal, to be viol uh, to hurt or kill, because we have these as assumed preclusions that there will be a number of murderers you know, for example, and so when science starts walking in the right area and going the right way and saying it looks like we're noticing that babies are being born with a certain uh, DNA, whatever, that uh, makes them more susceptible, what we still don't say 
more susceptible to the forces of society and nurturing that will result in somebody ending up by killing somebody. That's the part that's missing. And this has to do with being in the truthful center, not, not being uh, crazy or... Uh, there's a whole explanation to why we have that hardness, that shell that doesn't allow us to be flexible in this regard and immediately wants to make us be left crazy, wacko idealist is uh, a result of something that can also be explained, but that's not the case right now. I'm not going to go over an hour. That's it. I'm, not, I'm just going to end it right here. <laughs> Boom, like that. Sorry, Tina. I know. I'm sorry. It's, I, it was supposed to be. I haven't even answered. Uh, let's see. I have 30 seconds left. Uh, otherwise, we would be uh, probably one standing. Oh, okay. If we didn't do that, I don't get that entirely, but it's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm.